Hi, and welcome to episode two in our myth-busting series. My name is Dr. Thomas McGinn. And I'm Dr. Ankita Sagar. So here we go again, back by popular demand. We had a lot of interest in this uh, concept of taking some commonly held clinical beliefs and taking a deeper dive into the evidence. Uh, there's actually a QR code here for those who want to see the first series. And I'm going to today, I think we have two very interesting topics. The first one, we got a lot of questions on, and that's around, do we really need to drink this much water every day? For a healthy person, daily consumption, adequate intake, um, do you really need to be monitoring this? Do you need to be drinking X number of liters over time period? This is all under the assumption that you're perfectly healthy. And, you know, everyone's walking around with their big water bottles and doing all this. Thank you. You can show me your water bottle. Go ahead. There's a big water bottle. <laughs> so what's the data? What's the evidence on this, Ankita? I think it's a great question. And we tried to dig into it. And believe it or not, the recommendation comes from quite some time ago, National Academy of Medicine has sent out this recommendation on what is the appropriate hydration level. And most folks take the headline of it, which is reasonable, uh, which says, hey, for an average person who's healthy, if you are a male between the age of 19 and 19 years and 50 years old, 3.7 liters. And if you're a female, 2.7 liters should mm. be adequate. Still seems like a lot of water, by the way. But it is a lot of water. And I think the National Academy realized there was a lot of water they're recommending <laughs> because if you really dig into their recommendation, they actually say this adequate intake should not be interpreted as a specific requirement. Right. Furthermore, if you're healthy on a day-to-day -day basis, the combination of your thirst and consumption of beverages with your meals should allow a good maintenance of hydration level as long as you don't have any underlying disease. All right. So if you don't have underlying conditions, well, there's a parameter that was put out there. Basically, and I have talked to a lot of nephrologists about this, just let your thirst make your decisions for you between the fruit, the vegetables, and all the other things you're eating. You're also taking in a lot of fluid. So is are we is it true though that we have to monitor our intake and have x amount of gallons of water next to us every day nope that myth is busted thank you all right on to the second one i always hear this that you know a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet you know you can't really survive on that. You have to have some supplements or it's not good for you in the long term. There's got to be, you know, X, Y, and Z, um, which to me seems counterintuitive. But so there was a recent study that kind of addresses this question. So tell us about that. Yeah. So the question we're trying to answer is plant-based diet, vegan, vegetarian, like, are you getting everything that you really need uh, on that diet? And JAMA recently published a study. They took 22 healthy adult identical twins hmm. and they randomized them to a healthy vegan diet or a healthy omnivorous diet i am going to underscore the word healthy uh, because that means we are well balanced and for our vegetarian or wet vegan diet food groups include fruits vegetables legumes and nuts um, as sources of protein what they found was not only was the vegan diet equivalent to the omnivorous diet when it comes to appropriate nutrition, they found that the, those twins who were randomized to vegan diet had a lower LDL level, a lower fasting insulin level, mm. and unexpectedly had some weight loss, about 1.9 kg. Nice. I have a strange feeling the comments about what you're eating it was directed at me. So we can't just have a veg a, a vegetarian diet that's, my vegetarian diet is pizza and bagels. So that does not count. No, that does not count. Exactly. Okay. Yes, you want just to be clear. processed food okay. and a good balance of vegetables, protein, starch, and healthy fat. So let's be clear here. Is it true that you can't be healthy with a purely vegetarian diet? That myth is also busted. Two busted myths. 
Everybody send us ideas on future Miss episodes by responding to this email. We will then compare the evidence, we'll talk through it and see if they're true or not. Great. I look forward to the discussions on looking at the evidence behind some of these commonly held beliefs. <laughs>